Escapology, expensive horology. Yes, we're in Switzerland. It's the Geneva 2019 Motor Show. There is a lot of plug in content here. I'm here for you guys for Fully Charged. So, we're going to sniff out that plug in content and we shall seek it. We shall show it to you. We're going to do it now. This is the Kia Imagine concept car. So Kia already has the E-Nero, we're about to get the E-Soul, but they haven't got a four-door C-segment saloon that's fully electric, and that's what this concept is pointing towards. It's a hell of a handsome thing. You've got the uh, what they call the Tiger Mask, which is supposed to look like the nose of a tiger, design language, which you've seen on lots of other Kias over the years. But it's all integrated into this really beautiful front end. This is all cut in. You can see that this is actually floating, this horizontal center bar. And this can flow, and I think these are the indicators. It's beautiful. And then you've got these ripples, the sort of serrated edges down there, and there's some ripples that I'll come to on the side. Now what it is, is a, a saloon, like I say, that has one piece of glass for the windscreen and the whole roof. And that goes into like a ripple at the back where the tailgate is. It's a really, really cool thing. Of course, this is a bit of a flight of fantasy, but what Kia is basically saying is, we already make really good electric road cars. We want to make a slightly bigger, more executive thing. In here, this is full on uh, concept madness. 21 tablets flowing across the dashboard. The seats are interesting. It's like a sort of clamshell setup, very, very thin to maximize the floor space. Uh, the designers are saying you know, they want all the creativity of the cabin that you get from EVs. The seats are actually made from a combination of leather and silk, and there's this sort of tweed that's on the floor and on the base of the, the door panels, which is very, very cool. What else can I tell you? Well, there's no word about propulsion whatsoever because it's just a pure, um, a pure concept. There is some perspex inserts into the wheels which are very nifty and they refract light apparently you can probably just see them. this this is perspex in here and notice the logo the logo is different from the normal kia logo they've said that it's not necessarily pointing to anything but you never know maybe their higher end of cars might have a slightly different logo in the future you've got um cameras for mirrors like you have on all of these things now and if you come around here we're on a revolving turntable so we can't control the movement. These are ripples. Can you see the ripples? See my reflection? It really is quite stunning. And at the back, a floating uh, bar light with this sort of tunneled in. This is the indicator, I think, in here. It's probably, probably chiseled in. I have to say, Kia know how to design cars. I really, really like the look of this thing. It's incredible. Actually, when you look back, when you come all the way back here, and appreciate its side profile. It's a shape which you could see going into production. Maybe put some recessed door handles into it, and it's suicide back doors with no B pillar, but that's been done in production. And we now know that the cameras have been done in production. Scale those wheels back a bit in size. It's not as much of a flight of fantasy as you must think. And it's got the pro it could have the propulsion or a, an, ev an evolved propulsion of the E Nero and the Sol. So all in all then, the power to surprise, that is Kia's mantra. Uh, and it is quite a surprise, it is a pleasant surprise. Oh my gosh, I think I'm about to go into a, a light show. The turntable's sped up, I'm gonna have to go because I feel vulnerable. smart not a smart well when it's a Brabus ultimate e shadow edition that's when this is an electric smart so a smart EQ uh, one of 28 uh, special editions Brabus is like a tuning house um, that does specifically Mercedes cars even more wacky than AMG 
not under the official Mercedes umbrella, but approved by them slightly. The quality of this thing's insane. I don't know if the electric propulsion unit's been upgraded, but what I can show you is you've got extra uh, arches here, extra body kit to compensate for the these massive 18 inch wheels. Look how big they are, tiny. What's the profile of these tires? They are so, so, so narrow, shallow even. What is this? 205 35 18s on the front. I love looking at tyres. 235 30 18s on the back. You can even see the tinsy little drum brakes on the back. You've got a Brabus body kit here. Uh, this is a convertible car, but this is where it all gets so Brabusy in here. Go in there, I'll meet you round the back. In here, it's just a festival of cross stitch and leather and carbon fibre. Look at the carbon fibre binnacles on the dash around the infotainment and the rev counter and the Brabus gear knob. Brabus, um, they do go the extra mile when it comes to interior detail. Goodness me, leather, leather stitched floor mats. <laughs> um, it's really a style package, as you probably imagine. So one of 28, if you want the ultimate of the ultimate smarts, this is where you come, or do you? Because over there is the smart stand and they've just released another concept car. Hark, look at that. This is the smart 4E's plus concept. Now we had something called the 4E's at the Paris Motor Show, which had no roof. This is pointing towards the design language of the forthcoming next generation of smarts because smart has said by 2020, which is next year, it's gonna have pure electric in its range. There will be no piston powered smart. There already isn't a piston smart available in North America or in Canada. But the 4E's plus, that's the designer there, he's a nice guy called Mohammed. Um, it uses this, exactly the same length as a smart, that iconic 2.69 length, but it increases the width with these lovely blistered arches. Five centimeters wider on each back corner, three centimeters wider on each front corner. You see that at the back when you come around here. It's got really lovely big arches and like a deep dish wheel. Can you see the deep dish wheels where it's kind of a flat surface, but like a funnel in the middle? Very unusual design. But really, when you get back here, you see you've got this sort of bikini top, which is actually, it's a hard top that clips on and unclips. Um, and there's a, like, a, like a speedster kind of hump uh, for each uh, of the seats at the back here, which you can see through it. That top's kind of like a, a speedboat. You get those sort of sunshades on a speedboat. Got a diffuser at the back here, nice and smooth. And then you've got these lights, which Mohammed, the designer, was saying that those lights will probably be seen in the next smart, who knows? Not confirmed, nor unconfirmed. Come around here, because if we get a chance, we're gonna, we'll have a look inside. Because inside, instead of uh, the conventional air, air vents, because it's a full convertible with no windows and stuff, They've said you don't really need air vents, so they've converted those to information screens about the charging status of the car and about some other information uh, to do with an app which Smart has. Um, I really like it. Come and have a look at this front corner here. You've got these sort of nostril, nostril lights, uh, running lights down here. They, I think they're the indicators actually. They could be the indicators. But of course, it doesn't because it doesn't have an engine. It doesn't have any form of grill on the front. Uh, and the original Smart had the engine in the back, which this does, the motor and under the floor at the rear. So it's like a next-gen look at what, what the 4.2 could be. Really, all this does is shows you that electric mobility can be creative and sexy and cool and interesting. Because like I say, this is going to be purely electric by 2020. There won't be any piston Smarts available. I've got to go around the back because I forgot to show you the ducktail. You see it from the side here. Can you see that ledge? So off the back of these speed, speedster star humps behind each of the seats, you've got this lovely ducktail kind of spoiler and the rear lights are tunnelled in underneath. The idea, according to the designer for that, was so that you couldn't make the Smart any longer because its USP is it being 2.69 metres long, but he wanted to make it look sleeker and more stretched. You've got that lovely roof, which I, I think is fantastic. It's almost like a 60s beach buggy. And then that, that ducktail which stretches out over the boot lid. It's a very cool little thing. I've always liked smarts. They were ahead of their time. They're a brilliant car. I've intentionally crashed a few. They're incredibly safe.
That's nice, but it's not electric. That is nice, but it's not electric. It's 100 years of Citroen this year, and they've got a pretty impressive stand. And they're going back to the stuff that they are really good at with this, the Ami One concept. This is actually not classed as a car, it's classed as a quadricycle, which means in some countries you can drive it without a driving license. I think in France they call it a sans permis. That means it's less than 1.5 meters wide, it can't do more than 28 miles an hour, and it weighs less than 450 kilos. It's kind of like the Twizy idea, but Basically, it's a really funky little box and very utilitarian. Note, folding basic roof that opens and closes like a hatch. Note, windows that lift and drop with a catch like on a train, very 2CV-esque. Note the fact also, when this car spins around, the front panel, this red front panel, is identical to the panel on the back. And also the doors are identical. One opens in a suicide manner, one opens in a driver's manner. All those little chevron um, panels here, they're all interchangeable and not sided. The idea being, this is built to a strictly uh, achievable uh, low cost. The arches are interchangeable, so there's hardly any um, unique parts, panels to this car. Um, the idea being, it's, I guess, it's, it's Paris proof, so if you smack it about a bit, the panels won't cost very much. It also uh, really talks about the idea that uh, this is a car that young people are connected to and will share rather than own. You can see where the steering column is in, uh, behind the windscreen there. It looks like a head-up display. Well, what it is, is it mirrors your smartphone. There's hardly any electrics inside. It's all very paired back inside. You take your smartphone, you put it inside, it mirrors your smartphone onto a head-up display. The idea being that that then has a lot of the controls and the nav and all that stuff that you'll need. It's actually an idea which more manufacturers should probably do. This isn't gonna replace the, the Citroen C1, which is the smallest Citroen at the moment. I don't know if it's going into production, they haven't said, but it is fully electric. Um, and like I say, the idea is that it will uh, be available to drive for people without a license. In France, it has been rumored that sans permis cars are driven by people that lose their driving license, perhaps from a slightly boozy lunch. I'll leave that with you. That's very nice but it's not electric. This handsome devil made by Ital Design is called the Da Vinci and apparently it's called the Da Vinci because it's 500 years since the death of the amazing art artist and, and inventor Leonardo Da Vinci. I don't think there's any more connection than that, but it is a very cool looking car. It's a two door, but look at the size of the doors. Now, this is not going into production with a tower design, but what they're saying is essentially someone could purchase this design and it's been invented for VA or a yeah, full EV um, propulsion. I actually think it looks really, really cool. I mean, a tower design have been making cars for, for decades and very handsome ones too. Slightly aero finned wheels. You can see the aero going on on here on the front, on this front wing. Look, that's a, a plug in electric hole there. Look at, I mean, those doors are ridiculous, but very cool. They could easily just become a four door, but a really nice kind of swoopy hatch. But look at it, it is a pretty beast, isn't it? If nothing else, it means that manufacturers are now starting to appreciate the advantages of EVs with the whole flat floor thing, the flat bottom car, uh, bigger cabins, more creativity to be had inside the cabins. And to be honest, all I'm thinking about now is how damn clever Leonardo da Vinci was, because he really was very clever. He foresaw so many inventions. He didn't foresee this, I don't think, but other stuff. Oh my word, that is really, really, really arousingly nice. Not electric. I can't profess to know a lot about GFG style. They sound like a fly-by-night window company. But this is a fully electric Kangaroo Ligera, of course. Um, there's the main car. This is a plaster model. But the, 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 the stats on this sheet are incredible. It's called a Hyper SUV. Obviously, it's got winter tyres on it and a ski rack to say that it's all-wheel drive and it can go anywhere. But it's saying what? 
360 kilowatts of power, 680 newton meters of torque, 3.8 to 62, 250 kilometers an hour top end limited, uh, over 450 kilometers of range, aluminium space frame, carbon fiber body. I mean, it sounds impressive. I just wonder how these things pop up out of nowhere. There you go, the Kangaroo Legera. Probably not the name I would have called it, just saying. But interesting, right? That isn't nice, and it's also not electric. It's been mobbed the minute that we got into Geneva at eight o'clock this morning. It is, of course, Honda's E prototype. Now, I'm not even gonna try and getting a closer look at it because I've already had one and uh, we did a video on fully charged. If you haven't seen it already, it's one of our most successful videos because I think everybody likes the face of Honda's new electric car. It's very cool. Very cool indeed. Make it Honda, hurry up. Well, VW have got the ID Buzz, that amazing futuristic transporter van which comes out in 2022. This is Mercedes' answer to the large people carrier, exec people carrier. And this is the EQV concept, although the word concept is sort of irrelevant because this is a production van, the same as the piston van, that's been retrofitted with batteries and electric motor. It's front wheel drive. It's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack which lives under the floor. It is identical in terms of internal space as the conventional V-Class um, executive van. These are the sort of things that VIPs go to airports in. And actually this is the perfect kind of stealth wealth transport, more so than an SUV I think. Because it's a EQ, it's got bits of blue, it's got the aero style wheels here, these are 19s. You can see the front grille and the light detail it's really, really similar to uh, the production EQC, which is actually just there, being mobbed by people next to it, which is their first all-electric um, offering from Mercedes. There's a lot of DNA of the EQC here, and this grille I think we're going to see rolled out across the range. Remember, Mercedes are quite conventional, really, when it comes to their approach. In here, it's familiar and it's brilliant, if you've ever been in a V-Class. This one is particularly optioned, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six seats. You can have this as an eight seat. There can be a row of three and a row of three. This is kind of your conference suite spec. Um, so the floor is identical to the normal car. I'm gonna have a quick goosey gander under here. Yeah, you can see there's a piece of plastic cladding uh, where the packs live inside this space, which is very cool. Apparently you can fast charge it so you can get 62 miles uh, range in 15 minutes, um, 249 range mile range in total. Um, there's no word of a four-wheel drive version, so it's single motor, front-wheel drive, uh, and it's going to happen in 2021. It seems a bit far away. I reckon this is fully achievable in 2020, but maybe I'm just being hard on them. But yeah, there it is, the EQV. Mitsubishi's been known for a long time to go hardcore on the 4x4. Remember the old Shogun Pajero, the Mitsubishi Evo rally car, 4x4. Here we have the Engelberg Tourer. Nothing to do with Humperdinck. This is a plug-in hybrid, a FEV, um, and it can do up to 43 miles plug-in only. And it's called uh, the Engelberg after a ski resort in Switzerland, where we are. A bit random, doesn't sound great, but it's a concept. It's a bigger car than the Outlander FEV, their highly successful plug-in family car. Um, has a 2.4 petrol engine at the front. Like I say, 43 miles EV only capability. But what this is showing is that they can be a bit more brash and a bit more true 4x4-ish, off-roady with the plug, which many people aren't doing at the moment. And I think we're gonna see this more and more. It's got three rows of seats, so it can carry lots of people, lots of stuff, and it's encouraging friends and family to be a bit more outdoorsy. I do hope in all seriousness, no, that they make a bigger version of the Outlander or a more chunky, tough version of the Outlander FEV, because that FEV has been really successful for them. You get the gist of the Engelberg Tourer. It's got light bars, it's got skid plates, it's got these really set of far apart lights between the grill and the bumper. It's supposed to be outdoorsy and explorer-y. And a bit more chunky than the Outlander FEV. It's a bigger car, 
but the idea is there. Let's do some more off-roading, pure EV off-roading. It's quite a cool thing, actually. When is a Renault Twizy not a Renault Twizy? Well, when it's called a Seat Minimo. This is actually not based on a Twizy. It's Seat's interpretation of a quadricycle. A uh, bit late to the party if you compare it directly to a Twizy, but the main difference is this has a battery swap system. It has a 62 mile range, and they have managed to make it so that they can swap the batteries out within minutes rather than just waiting for a charge. It's also geared around people that want to share cars in a city rather than necessarily wanting to own one. It's nifty, 17 inch wheels, motorbike style tires, 1.24 meters wide, so really narrow. Two and a half meters long. It's a one plus one, like the Twizy. The passenger sits behind the driver, like a Messerschmitt bubble car. And it's quite funky, actually. Come around to the side and uh, it's got an information screen down there in the front behind a piece of glass. And it's got these, it's got lovely little aerodynamic kind of earlobes for the back lights. And it's quite a cool thing. I just can't help thinking that they're going to put it into production in 2021. And that's a long way away. And the Twizy's been in production for what? Five years? Might even be six years. So I don't entirely understand why they're doing it. It's a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, in this thing, so a bit of a tiddler. Um, and, uh, and the Twizy, you know, can only be plugged in on a three pin plug. I think this is probably the same, which is why they decided to swap the batteries out. There's a little pull tray at the back to be able to put a suitcase in, which is quite neat. It's got asymmetric doors. Because this is a city focused car, it's got asymmetric doors for uh, ease of opening uh, in traffic spaces. It's also got a solar panel on the roof. I don't know if you can see it, it's a sleek, pretty little thing. I bet it's a lot of fun. I just think the Twizy probably deserves to succeed more because he got there first. But that's not the way of the world always, is it? This is the Cupra Formenta concept. You're going to now say to me, what's Cupra? I'm going to say to you, I'm not entirely sure either. But what it is, is the performance arm of Seat. You used to be able to get Seat Cupras when they were fast. They've now turned it into a sub-brand slightly pointlessly but there you go and here it is but the reason why i'm showing it to you on fully charged is because it is a plug-in hybrid a phev a fast one 242 brake horsepower and it has the ability to travel up to 31 miles ev only crucially it looks pretty cool it's kind of a crossover angry yeah it's a crossover thing with roof bars and slightly raised ground clearance but angry bumpers and lips and satin paint and stuff can't tell you any performance figures because nobody's given me any. Uh, but come around here. Shimmy through the crowd, because it's busy here. Shimmy through the crowd, you get an idea of what we're talking about. It's kind of an attractive crossover, a kind of Nissan Qashqai shape, um, five door. So practical and quite fast, but crucially for us, a half decent. I think, I think over 30 miles EV only is a bit of a milestone in terms of real world commutability without the engine striking up, unless you want full power, of course. I don't understand why we are seeing lots of sub brands at the moment. We're seeing Seat with its Cupra sub brand, we're seeing uh, Citroën with its DS sub brand. Can we just save our money a bit and concentrate on just making better cars? Forget the sub brand bit, you know. This is Skoda's Vision IV, and what this is is a very well-attended stand with a coupe crossover SUV kind of mold-breaking thing, showing what the design of a future Skoda could look like. Skoda's always gone for that sort of strong vertical slack grille. It's a completely electric vehicle under, underpinned by the MEB platform, which is the Volkswagen Group's all-new electric skateboard platform, which we're going to see loads from. This car, or a derivative of this car, won't come out until 2021, which is when Skoda have said that they will announce their first full production uh, car. It does zero to 80% in 30 minutes, not to 62 in 5.9 seconds, uh, and 302 brake horsepower. Two motors, one at the front, one at the back, so it can be four wheel drive if it wants to be. Come around here, have another look. It's, it's a pretty busy stand, I'm not gonna lie. But it's a good looking car. So many trends we're seeing of concept cars, these sort of flat but corrugated aero alloys. 
like Mercedes EQ and Audi e-tron, they've all got this sort of thing. Some neat touches here. So it's your usual pillarless, uh, frameless doors, but a four door or a five door hatch, no door handles, classic concept car, paraphernalia, bobbins. The inside does look very good, I can't deny it. It's got a really nice sort of floating infotainment system. It's a four seater, as you can see through the glass with this lady's polishing. It's a generous four seater. Seeing this all over the place, aren't we? Illuminating Skoda badges. It's the world of LEDs, you see. Look at this LED in the back bumper, right at the bottom here. Is that a running light or a brake light? Well, it's a concept car, so it's probably nothing. But we'll see in 2021. The interior's got some cool things in it. I mean, it is a bit concept car mad. But you've got a birch veneer. If you look on the door shut here, a birch veneer, which is very interesting. You've got what looks like recycled bathroom mats from the 1970s, which I'm quite down with. A lot of other recycled materials. Um, and you've also got some, it looks like cut glass for door handles and a bit of center console. Again, a Cortic steering wheel, two spoke steering wheel. There's a lot of Cortic wheels going on about, considering the Austin Allegro got vilified back in the mid 70s for having a square steering wheel. We're seeing it all over the shop these days. At last year's Geneva show, uh, 2018, uh, Lagonda, the luxury uh, brand of Aston Martin, revealed something called the Concept Saloon. And the Concept Saloon was a fully electric, um, very similar looking car to this. What is this? Well, this is the car that's actually going to go into production before the saloon, and this is called the Lagonda SUV Concept. So it's a slightly higher, 200 millimeters higher than the saloon, very similar design language. Lagonda, you might remember, last brought out a car in the late 70s, and it was a spaceship, a crazy Battlestar Galactica looking thing, which I think has aged so well because it, it was so tomorrow's world and out there. This is all electric, 800 volts, um, four wheel drive, an all-terrain vehicle, so a luxury all-terrain vehicle, not a full on off-roader, but has a raised ground clearance, but it uses this specific design language, a really lovely kind of swoopy, narrow eyes, and if you come round to the side here, you can see, um, again, pillarless. It's a bit of a fashion we've seen. Pillarless, so no B-pillar. Um, suicide opening rear door. But what differentiates Lagonda from Aston Martin is Lagonda is um, a more roomy, more luxurious passenger car, whereas Aston Martin's more sport, performance orientated. There's no detail on the, uh, the types of batteries or the types of motors. Um, this is a 5.3 meter long car, so kind of Rolls-Royce Phantom levels of, of length. However, we've been told that the interior space is that of a 6.3 meter car, so it's really maximizing that EV packaging. It's gonna be made in the UK, which is great, because I'm talking to you uh, only a few weeks before the dreaded B word Brexit might or might not happen. Um, this car is gonna be made in Wales. So that's really good in Aston's new purpose-built facility. It is a mad car, and actually from this angle, if you look down on this side profile, can you see this upswept um, kind of diffuser rear? Now that's good for climbing, because this is a, you know, like I say, an all-terrain vehicle, but it's also good for aerodynamics to be able to pull that air out and push it up. It's got some really crazy shapes on it. It is a, a bold statement of a car, but I like it. What's this going to compete with? Well, Aston Martin says it doesn't necessarily compete with the Rolls-Royce Cullinan or the Bentayga, but it's for people um, maybe of that level, a sort of a, a young entrepreneur, um, kind of Silicon Valley wealth person who's a bit future thinking, maybe has a Tesla Model X, but doesn't know where to go from there. Well, this is where you could go from here. 800 volts, wireless charging, um, 300 mile range apparently, if you want the performance pack. Uh, 400 mile range if you just want it to be more range focused. Yeah, so last year we introduced the sedan, which was the vision concept for a Lagonda sedan. This is the all-terrain concept. Key feature of both of them, obviously, is this is the first truly luxurious 
battery electric vehicle. So Lagonda is an all battery electric company offering the latest in technology, electrification technology, and obviously luxury. So tying the luxury world to the tech world, if you like. The design language is there to describe that both by its volume and by its form. It's, it's changing the perception of the luxury product because we, we know about wood and leather. We've, we've known about wood and leather for hundreds of years within the, the, the automotive industry. And this it's really about what are the other materials that we recognize as luxurious. So we have al alpaca, wools in here. We've got cashmere, so wool and silk combinations. We've got raw silks, um, ceramics are used crystals, woven leather floors. So it's all about the craft and using different luxurious materials within the context of Lagonda as a luxury product and not the traditional woods and leathers that you would expect in the world of luxury. And these, of course, are lighter in weight. So, you know, an alpaca or a cashmere is much lighter than a leather hide. So we're actually using lighter weight materials that still have an incredibly luxurious hand and feel as well. Before I even got to Geneva, I knew that two key manufacturers weren't going to be here, which is a bit of a surprise. Ford, not here, no presence. And Jaguar Land Rover, no presence at all uh, because of their, um, their, cut, their job cutbacks, um, their financial situation. And it's a real shame because actually, just 12 hours before the show opened, uh, it was announced that Jaguar had won uh, European Car of the Year with its iPace. Oh, the irony, there isn't one here, such a shame, but a deserving car. So it won UK and European Car of the Year. As I'm passing through the Mazda stand, it's 30 years, it's the 30th anniversary of the MX-5, and there's no real special edition apart from maybe an interesting colour, and I can't help thinking, as great a car as it is, I've always thought the engines were average at best. Wouldn't it be great to have a fully electric MX-5? That chassis, that feel, the steering, the simplicity, but with an EV drivetrain. Mazda could surely collaborate with somebody on a car like that, and I think they would sell it. Because if they don't do it, someone's going to do it before them and beat them to it. Mazda, come on. Last year in 2018, the humble VW Beetle turned 80 years old and was axed. It wasn't continuously made all that time, but it was a sad moment. The original VW Beetle had a flat floor pan, which was why it was perfect for the invention of the beach buggy. An American guy called Bruce Mayer invented a glass fiber body that could be bolted onto a Beetle floor pan and you could drive off road and have lots of fun. Now, VW DW have decided to redo that, the same spirit using the MEB, their electric car flat platform, their skateboard platform, which in theory is perfect for the same thing. This is the ID buggy. It's a funky looking thing in what appears to be sort of satin Viper green. Now, 204 PS, rear wheel drive, that's all great. Composite body with some bits of aluminium and some bits of steel. The body's removable from the floor pan, just like the original. Perfect for hot countries and holidays and re-remakes of the Thomas Crown Affair with Robert Llewellyn, that sort of thing. I'm a big fan of, of, of the original Beetle, it's my first car and I know Robert really likes them. I don't know how realistic this is, I love the shape of it, it looks funky. You can imagine it being a lot of fun as a 2 plus 2 in a hot country. The original Beach Buggy was born for fun and this is the same spirit, it's, it's actually a really, a really good remake of, of, of it. Simple one piece body, no doors, uh, no window, side windows, just a windscreen, open back which can be converted into a 2 plus 2. No roof, no worries. And it's rugged, high ground clearance, like all the things you'd expect from a beach buggy. It is anybody's guess if Volkswagen are gonna make it, I just, I don't know. There's a lot of concepts coming out from VW right now. Many promises need to be fulfilled. I love the Geneva Motor Show. It's always buzzing, there's always loads of interesting stuff. It was brimming this time, it's been manic. 
We've got lots and lots of plug-in content. We might not have got everything, but we tried our best to get as much access to as much stuff as possible. So thank you very much for watching. I'm really broken now. As usual, if you like this video, please just click like. If you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe. Patreons, thank you so much for uh, pledging. Uh, we couldn't do this stuff without you. I know I say this every time, but it's, it's absolutely true. Um, from fully charged headquarters in uh, Switzerland, au revoir, as they say in Switzerland. <laughs>